It is um, Monday, August 19th, uh, 2024. We're here at the um, Moortown uh, town office in the John Hogelboom uh, conference room. And it looks like we've got three of us here in the, uh, the room tonight as far as board members and both Callie and John online. Thank you both for joining there. And then we have a small group here. Um, so I'll open with um, general public comment. So I don't know who was here first, because I was not. So whoever was, if you would want to kind of go. Well, I'm not going to say hello. I'm going to be talking about um, what, what's on, on this in the same order. This is about... Um, is this a one copy? Yeah, I have oh, one copy, okay. so I'm going to have to share. Okay. 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 I'm going to need the other. And, and I know who you are, you do, but so the... The TV can uh, know who you are and what you're talking about. Oh, you... I'm, I'm talking about St. Patrick's Cemetery. Yep, okay. Right now. Thank you. And I when I was going over my own tax stuff, well, the internet, I, that's, that's I noticed that the town for the ownership of St. Patrick's Cemetery said Moortown, town of Moortown, and the address and everything. And so I was wondering what had happened because on the next page, you'll see the deed to the cemetery. This one right here. Yes, that one right there, yeah. Ooh, right. And oh, it's hard to read, but I, I, I can tell you what's on it. Okay, go for it. Yeah, I've read these before. I, I, I don't know if you're going to now, but I'll find it and then no, it's got the page number. So right. 346, is it? Right. If you go to the notes, I think it's 316. Oh, 316. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. If you go to the third that? page, which is the one that looks like this, yeah. yeah. Uh, there is oh. a copy of what was on the. Uh, I looked this feed up. Okay. And it says. Have the third day, okay. And it says the cemetery deed. Uh, the cemetery deed is in book seven, page 316. Okay. And the owner is Bishop Benedict okay. Fenwick, and it's a warranty doc deed, document number 9902217474, and it is dated July 12, 1845. All right. So that kind of there must have been when it was digitized, it must have, a link or something must have gotten lost because there's other, it, it goes on with that. And then in 18, uh, 1973, this is the last page, page four, 1870, uh, 1973, uh, there was a uh, report yeah. from the Historical Society. And I have it marked, and it says records at the Moortown Town Clerk's Office show that on March 15, 1841, J.P. Miller of Montpelier, Vermont, and Peter Lee deeded to the Roman Catholic Society for one acre on the lot drawn to the original right of Thomas St. John, measuring to covering one acre in a square form to be used for a burying ground in church for said society. Then in July 1845, from J.P. Miller and Peter and Francis Lee to Bishop Fenwick, Bishop of Boston, a deed to place and trust the land described above. This is the cemetery that's so right? Yes, yeah, right, right. And there's a map, I think I I didn't know I gave you that one. It yeah. looks like this. It's this. Yeah, is we got that too. And it yeah. has all the information that's up on the web, but it does not say. I mean, all of this. So, Ellen, look, excuse yeah. me. Yeah. Um, so, I guess you're, you're what you're questioning is why it says owner information. It says more town and more town. Is that what the question is? Yes, and, and instead of. Uh, well, whatever you would put the bishop's right. name well, there, which is what's on other 
Or if you don't buy the church, church, church store, store you yeah, can't be honestly is it owned by the bishop anymore. Well, the bishop is the, he was the uh, head of the Catholic right. Church. Right, so it's owned church. by the Catholics. Yeah, church. absolutely. Okay. All right, well, we can certainly look into it. Um, right. And it's very important to me because okay. I'm going to leave a, a, a legacy account to them and I have to, it has to be straightened out before sure. I do that. Okay. Okay. So, do you need any more proof or anything? Or right. so nothing the select board is going to be able to ourselves do. We will, uh, and I'm not sure that you. Who the authority is here in town, um, whether we go to the treasurer with this, probably we'll start there um, and see. It, it might be very simple. Like you said, when things were moved over, it might have been something very simple or it may not be. I don't know. Right. But yeah, the afraid you might have just put them on yeah. the address or something or things like that yeah, because yeah. it is. Um, so let's let's start there and try to figure out what went wrong. And it's it seems like it's pretty clear here on the church, and, yeah, and yeah. I don't believe the town does. So, <laughs> yeah. and then the, the church there uh, is no longer there, but the, right. it's, it's down here. But right. that one is owned by the church. I mean, I checked that one out too. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. It's, just, it's just the one acre of the cemetery sits on. Yeah. Okay. And the church is owned by the diocese of Burlington. Yes. Is that yeah. how it okay. works? Yeah. Okay. Very good. Well, thank you. Okay. We'll get thank, you. Well, thank you for your time. Yeah. Bob, how are you? Good. Good. All right. All right. Do we have anyone else for general public comments? Yeah. I don't know. If nobody else. Well, I think. No, you're not. Oh, you were done. Oh, okay. Moral support. All right. Okay. Yes. <laughs> they didn't need to talk. Well, we knew you were there. That's why they didn't leave it. Thank God. Yeah. Thank God. Yeah. Dennis, what do you got to on? So, uh, Dennis Becker, uh, maybe you want to Sure. Uh, thank you. Uh, You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the king of bad timing. I'd like to complain about the activities at the yard, the town yard. Uh, I understand we just had fun. You guys are really busy. We're getting ready to pat them on the back and tell them what a great job. Um, but this is ongoing. It's like this morning, I sent Don an email at 5.45, they start the truck stuff. They start loading and banging boxes around and dumping things. It's just like, it's it's inappropriate in a residential neighborhood. To, at 5.45, I fully agree. Yeah. yeah, you have, you know, there's no arguments. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that's what I said to him when we back. It was, yeah, there's so, got to be a reasonable start time. Yeah. Standard, it's, you know. It's probably the contractors because the guys aren't starting until 6.00. Right? So, yeah. Yeah, well, I don't well, know. The contract is oh, right. I mean, we we are responsible for the contract. Yeah. yeah, so we'll get the word out. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I've lived there since '98, and uh, it seems like every five or six years, you have to kind of remind them, yeah, not to start so early. And, but and, and during the summertime, we they do start early anyways because they go on ten hour days, so yeah. we're we're ahead. Um, but. Not 545. Right. And I apologize, Dennis, for that yeah. being that early. And we'll make sure the contractors are, are not there that time in the morning. Yeah. yeah. Just, well, well, what do you think the consensus in the neighborhood would be, you know, as a, a goal for the time? I don't know. Didn't we have a set? I think it was a set time of yeah. seven o'clock. It was like seven. It's seven o'clock. And that's why we I know um had some discussions when we were going on the ten hour that we shouldn't start quite as early because in fact, I think I brought it up this past time is because they're, you know, you don't have an hour of prep time in the garage. So right. you're going to get out into the pit because they do want to get work and stuff that they don't want to work. Right. And I know we've had discussions about maybe Martin fills the trucks up to dump in the afternoon, you know, so that at seven when he comes in, he just Drive starts away. up and goes away. Yeah. Um, we've Fair had those discussions in the past, yeah. and, you know. I mean, I think everybody's reasonable and understands they have a tough job to do, but you know, the most, the, whatever they can do to make it a little bit more reasonable. And then a uh, slightly different subject. Just and, before you move on, we will address that, but I cannot promise you that tomorrow morning someone might not be yeah, there. Yeah. 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 If you'll. Yeah. No, I'm just we'll, we'll going to it. That's what I'm just Yeah. And then also, um, I mean, they're just dumping tremendous amounts of soil there. 
which I'm sure has been a little work and whatnot. Uh, yeah, here too. I mean, I don't know what the, if there's an overall plan with the yard or what's going on because it's like they're pushing dirt towards the river. I would even think, I don't know if there's a regulation about how close you can get to the river with piles of, of soil. You know, I work in the solid waste program and uh, we don't regulate soil, but there is used asphalt, which is a solid waste that seems like it's getting awful close to the river. I don't, which is fine. We can, we're in an emergency situation. We're storing it there. I don't know if there's an overall plan. Well, I, what we're doing, the stuff that we're extracting, like we took the fair amount of stuff out of here that was, it's usable on our class four roads. Right. And they're not our priority. Our first priority is getting the class three up. But this way we're, I think, and I don't know everything they're doing down there, but based on some of my conversations with them, I know we are static, saving some of the stuff that we think is salvageable that we can put on some of the class fours. Yeah. Um, in in trips, you're right. Uh, that's not quite up to specs, but we'll be good for those places. So, um, you know, I'll check with them, Dennis, but I, I know we're not planning on having piles and piles, and piles of yeah. stuff. I mean, they need to get around uh, to get sand in the, in the winter and such. So it's, uh, you know, I can, I guess, we don't plan on having extended piles of, of junk material there. We'll have the four to five, I guess around 4,000 yards of sand we usually do, and then he keeps a couple hundred yards of material for, you know, early mud season and things like that. Yeah. And that's usually Which to the front of the pit. Right. And that's usually at the front of the pit. Um, but I'll, I'll, we can check with them and make sure that we're not storing stuff in a, that's going to be. Washing into the river, right? Um, and you know, we're trying to keep, and, and I think they're pretty conscious of trying to keep a good looking uh, sand pit if you can. Um, but uh, as you are well aware of, and as you mentioned a couple of times, we're, we're still in this emergency mode where we're trying to figure out how we're going to get um, the roads. Uh, yeah, no, no, passable no, by no, winter. No, no, no. I mean, they're passable right now, but how? Yeah. Um, so some of the some of the things that we may sometimes keep a better eye on uh, are probably getting overlooked right now. Yeah, that's why I said that. A bad timing by me. But but, <laughs> I, 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 we understand as well. I mean, yeah. you need to live with it. I, I've got empathy for you, and uh, you know, there's a balance there that we need to make sure we're we're doing our share, and we'll follow up with the guys. And uh, if there's anything that's really odd with it i'll uh check in with you and let you know if there's something that would be uh you know any reasons why we have to be there early for an extended period of time or anything like that all right appreciate it do you know does the town own any other properties as far as what for well just because you know I, in my in my job I, I do a lot of uh, work with towns with fema and fema always wants you to manage debris material in a, in a certified facility so like, for example, Plainfield does not have a certified facility. And so FEMA asked them, well, where did you manage this material? And they're like, oh, some farmer let us put it in his field. And FEMA doesn't want to reimburse him for that reason. So we have to, we have to write him some sort of approval, but it's usually like after fact. The fact would be much nicer if it was a before the fact. Yeah. So if the town was think I know I think last year I sent Ray Washburn an application to do that. I haven't heard back, so I assume they just couldn't find a good place to do it. Which is funny, you know, towns you think towns have a lot of land. Yeah. Not not really. We don't have a lot No. No. What do you call it the certified site? It's categorical disposal facilities. Used to in the back in the day call it a stump dump. Oh yeah, and, right. When everybody in town would throw yeah. it. Leaf and yard waste and stump dump, you know, stumps usually over a bank in an inappropriate place. You're seeing uh, the rain set landfill. I don't know if you have a. Yeah, yeah down there. there by, that's probably why the landfill started. I don't know. Yeah. It is stump dump. Official, but George Carpenter's land has been used for some things. Does it just need to be documented? Yeah, yeah. Well, we 
we would issue you a certification and then the town would add that. And when FEMA said, where did you manage this material? Right it's here, it's certified. All right, that's ready that's, to thanks for the heads up for that. We would, yeah, yes. uh, we've struggled with some towns. No, I not quite. I need to have more time after go through this. Thanks, uh, I appreciate that. Yeah, that's good. That's it for me, Thomas. Anything else? Nope. All right. John or Callie, you have anything? They're pretty good to email me six and one. And you answered right away. <laughs> right at it, you know. <laughs> well, thank you, guys, for right. coming in. I'll see you guys Thursday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. I'll be there. Okay. All right, sorry, uh, what do we got here? All right, Mr. Chamberlain, come on over. How are you, Carol? So I emailed this out to you earlier. I'm sorry I didn't do it last week. I don't, know, I don't know if anybody had a chance to look at it, but I do paper copies. Okay. And which do we want to cover first? Zoning fees or interim bylaws? Interim bylaws. Interim bylaws. Okay. 100. I don't know <laughs> whether they're in the bylaws. What would I think there should be this one there. Oh. Huh? Oh, no, that's exactly oh, yeah, no. And uh, John Callie, so you would have this on your email that Carol sent out. So this is almost verbatim. I did a little bit of wordsmithing. Um, what was put in place following Irene in 2011. And basically what it does is lets me work with people permitting any repair work they need to have done as long as it fits within these parameters without requiring that they go through this, the customary development review board conditional use review because it's in the floodplain. So basically if they're fixing their house, they're not changing the footprint of their house. If it's substantially damaged, that's a bigger picture. And then we need to get in touch with DDC and make sure everything, and that's stated in here too. But if it's pretty much just repairing an existing footprint and not making anything any bigger and doing some flood related repairs and some yeah. flood mitigation, well, well, yeah. okay. um, then it lets me go ahead and, and process the permit without and this, I must say, worked very well after Irene. Um, you know, we had right. it just as something that uh, works well. Because we do need to issue permits. Like if something, if, you know, something happened to your basement wall or something, we could just go fix it if it wasn't due to an emergency. But since this is due to a flooding and an emergency, there needs to be a permit issued. And a permit normally would have to go through the ERB. So right. that's pretty much. Mm -hmm. especially, right. especially in the flood zone yeah. to begin with, right? Um, so I'd, uh, I'd uh, move to accept the interim flood hazard area bylaws. Is there a second? Is there a three on these, though? Or? Second. All right. Thank you, Kelly. Further discussion? So, so, do you want to do that as a whole package, though? Or each? No, no. no. The date thing, and this is where I looked back to it, the 2011, it looks as though you can adopt it tonight because it's an emergency measure, but you do need to hold a public hearing. So we can put, if you adopt it tonight, we can put a public hearing notice up in the regular posting places around town. We can get something in the Times Argus, and then we can schedule a public hearing for your next meeting. Perfect. I don't know what we Oh, and it says it's for seven. Yeah. You see the dates you're good with that? I did. I saw that. Right. And that's fine. That's yeah. good. It's good. Right. Any other discussion on it? Sean or Callie? Don? Nothing. Okay. All in favor of the motion uh, to accept the interim flood area bylaws, please say aye. 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 aye.
the eyes have it. We will sign this copy here. And then, Sasha, if you can work um, with Carol to make sure that we get a um, uh, notification. notification. Yep. All right. Moving on to the zone. Zone schedule. So. Oh, we're going to sign just this sheet. Yeah. Yeah. Just the one. Yeah. Oh. So I've been meaning to get this to your attention for a while. Um, the main thing I wanted to adjust was, for some reason, we were charging a two hundred dollar publication fee, and the. Publication the the notices that I've had to publish range in the sixty to seventy five dollar range, and the seventy five dollar one actually had two hearings in it. So, so it seems to me we're not really trying to make that, that affordable. The affordable, right? Yeah. So, I figured if we were changing that, though, I kind of looked at some other area, some other local zoning fees and looked at some of these that seemed a little out of line from 2019. So I sent you all a, a Pencil. little penciled in, these are the changes I'm proposing. And then I also sent it, and this is what the final draft would look like. And I moved some things around because there were things under other fees that really are zoning permit fees. There wasn't a pond fee listed at all. There was no fee for a fill, which to me is one of the more complicated things you would have to permit. So I don't know why there would be no fee for it. But that so this is like fully up for discussion, but this was just my initial first suggestion. Rough. Yeah. Man, you have a hard time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. Yes, yes. Thanks, so. You know, that one for now, so you don't get confused. This is a paper. So the the first one, the, the $100 is just a minimum. There would still be like $0.10 cents per square foot. And then the same with the third one down, the $0.15 cent per square foot. I just raised, raised the minimum. Um, when you were you looking at other towns? I was looking at other nearby towns. Yep. Yeah. And even these are generally the same or lower than other nearby towns. So it's I didn't I didn't suggest too high of an increase. Uh, what's that? Is that pond? Is that is that a hundred? Yeah, it's a yeah. hundred. Okay. So, because, I mean, actually, because a lot of these things that, you know, with more of the regulations and statutes and stuff, it takes longer to actually research right. it and to, to get it the It takes longer together. to do it. And I'm sure that my salary is more than what the Sony Minister was making in 2019. So it just, I just thought it might balance out to increase it a little bit. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, everything's gone up. That's for sure in life. And the bottom was either improved and add to a bot or add to a bot. Yeah, I don't know. So sometimes people don't read it all thoroughly and they forget to include the recording fee and then we don't have the recording fee and we have to reach out to them and get the recording fee. Right. And on what? There, some people do it separately, you know, some towns do it separately and some towns incorporate it right into the fee, which is a little more straightforward when somebody's looking at their fee schedule. And then we know to pull the fifteen dollars recording oh, fee out and apply it correctly for right. accounting purposes. Right. Uh, yeah, I think yeah, we I could think do that as long as we communicate that that this includes. Um, right. Right. The, the language you would change. Right. 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 All don't agree with me that some of these should go up, but this is kind of the final speed schedule. It looked like with all my Pennsylvania things incorporated.
I think everything looks reasonable, both the um, increase in fees and also I think it's very uh, good that we can reduce the publication fee to 75. I mean, we're not here to make money on the publication fees. Right. Um, yeah, and if you've done your research, I mean, we hire you to come up with this stuff. So um, I like it. I think it looks really good. What do you think, Robin? Good. Yeah. Allie, John? Good. I mean, I think it looks good. I think one thing to think about, though, is while the cost of everything is going up, you know, if we're looking at adding in town and having people build more, you know, thinking about what those fees are going to look like to kind of encourage that going forward. I think I understand that. And I think that's what Carol's trying to do with like reducing that publication fee where that's a clear area where we don't, that money is more or less profit, if you will. We're not trying to do that. Whereas everything else I think that we're doing um, is really just trying to cover costs. Right? Mm -hmm. but certainly and to think about it, I mean, the town itself has enough problem getting rid of extra material from ditching and whatever. So adding an X that kind of adds an extra problem and looking at, you know, especially with materials, you know, finding a place to get rid of it. People aren't going to want to pay to have it at the town saying we need a place to put this. Kelly, well, are you referring to the fill. road crew possibly needing a place to put something and the homeowner needing some fill? Yeah, well, if they need fill and there's ditching material, they can only take so much. And, you know, especially with a lot going around, there are times when they have trouble, you know, finding a place for that material. So. There, there is in the regulations, there's an exemption for that kind of situation with a limit on the number of yards that can be taken and given to a property owner, but that there is an exemption for that in the regulations. Okay. To, to some degree, yeah. That's a good, good point, both. You're talking about if they're filling in property to build a structure, essentially, for the $100 fee here. I guess right. they need to fill in somewhere. Right. Okay. This is actually in re retrospect and building a structure on top of a film property. No, or do. I can't predict the different reasons people might come and say they want to put a bunch of fill in, but I think okay, it's well, a good idea to yeah, have right. some kind of review instead of no right. permit involved. Right. 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 Yeah. Thoughts? No, I yeah, I mean, I don't see any huge things. I don't think, you know, a $25 raise in any individual price is going to stop somebody from necessarily building it here. But, uh, you know, to, to Carrie's point, uh, and I think we need to recoup, you know, as much as we're spending for Carol's time and stuff. And, you know, in the past, I don't feel that that's been the case. So I think this is a reasonable step forward to do that. All right, so I'd, um, I'd move to um, accept the new fee schedule for the permit applications. I'll, I'll second that. Thank you, John. Is there any further discussion at all? Should I amend everything to incorporate the recording fee into the fees? I think so. I think so. Right. So yeah. She's nodding her head. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, I just have it in this first paragraph. Right. I'll just yeah, the first first paragraph, paragraph. And then I yep. can get rid of the word at the bottom. The bottom, bottom. And it's like after we read the whole thing, you're like, oh, right. right. There you go. Well, it's an extra thing. And say what it includes $15. Right. Well, yeah. Right. All right. Well, thanks. Good questions. Yeah. Okay. All in favor, vote aye. 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 Any opposed? None. All right. Thank you, everyone. That passes. Thank you, Carol. Thank you. Anything else for us tonight? Nope. Thanks for keeping an eye on our channel. Yes, thank you, and and uh, appreciate your work with the 
the people who have been flooded out and using your common sense and making that work with our regulations. How's that going, all right? Yeah. There are a couple of places I need to go do a substantial damage determination. I'm not sure that anybody's hit that level, but I need to go fill out the paperwork to make sure nobody's hit that level. Good. Well, keep it up. Thank you. We appreciate um, what you're doing out there. Okay. All right. Thank you. Have a nice day. Is, is, are, they, are you working on the what's going on just well, since you said the floods and stuff? We, the folks on Route 2, is anything going happening with that? The one Which with one? The the, bio, the the, ties and yeah, that stuff conference. has all been um, it's, kind of it's, all it's, it's all in process. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, everything is I think it was accepted about a week ago, wasn't no, it? All so right yeah. I have yeah. one person from this recent event who might be interested in elevation, but I think she's talking about a little bit different program and insurance coverage as opposed to the actual elevation hazard mitigation program. So I'm, no. I think I've finally figured out why she and I are kind of not talking the same language. <laughs> so tomorrow I can have a conversation with her where we are talking the same yeah. language. Good. How many homes out there there that are going to be off for the buyout? Is it just Seriously. Larry and Larry West? It's about 10, 10 homes through that area. Yeah, because you have the Douglases who have two or three uh, or five. Okay, five. Uh, Noise, who's got a few. And then and Larry so. and um, Steve. Steve. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And there's another couple there too. Um, the, the first people I've heard of their names were. I wonder where all those folks are going to go. Schaefer, right. Well, Larry's got a house in um, Grand Isle. Yeah, well, I know, but I mean, you know, the folks that are living there as far as the more towns. No, I, the other thing, I mean, with that buyout stuff, um, something we need to discuss is, and I've brought it up when I've then when I've met or talked with the uh, Wells delegation is, you know, we're losing that to our uh, grand list, you know, and so, you know, 10 properties, you know, yeah. a couple million dollars, yeah. you know, probably a value. I don't know what they are, uh, but then, you know, figure that out on their taxes. And I understand yeah. that. And, we buy, you know, and we're also buy. losing some nice folks in our community. Yeah. Right, exactly. No, uh, Too bad. I don't think they'll be able to find another place in more town. They can, they will. No, it's not uh, not good. Yeah. That's, but we're doing, I, I think it's the right thing to do. Yeah, I know. Yeah. They can't keep getting flooded. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, Carol. Thank you. Keep all right, so we're gonna. Yeah, that's gonna go. Yeah, Tasha. Yeah, Tasha. We have to start making a pile. That's great. Thank you, girl. Thank you. All right, so uh, Sasha, what do you have for reports for us? Um, I sent you guys an email marked confidential today. Yeah. Um. I just wanted to bring that up. I don't know if we we'll, can talk we'll, about it at another date. Yeah, well, we may address it tonight. If not, we can do it next. It's not, I read the letter. It's not yeah. like no, emergency. No. Anything emergency. No. Yeah. Okay. Um, Good with the I, well, <laughs> I would like to say, if you could, um, I'd like to uh, request to, to go into executive session. If you could, tonight? tonight. Oh, okay. yeah, absolutely. We can. Yeah, we get okay. towards the end of the meeting. Yeah, that. Okay. yeah. So, I don't know if we want to we could discuss that. And... We can probably do that at the same time. It won't take very long at all, I don't think. All right, Sasha, so what else? Fence um, regarding the fence between Reddings and Midtown Garage. Oh, yeah. There's two different ones for replacing a good majority of it, uh, $4,200, $4, and then replacing the whole thing would be $5,200. So I don't know. How you guys want to go about? Why don't you leave that and then we can take a look at it and maybe talk with Martin or yeah. go down there and do anything. Yeah. Um, Five thousand dollars. That's a lot of money. For a change in the fence. One hundred and forty feet of it. All right. What else, Sasha? And then I have uh, two warrants and a permit, and that's it. So these three things there. All right. Very good.
But John, you have anything uh, for us tonight? Uh, no, I do not. All right. How about you, Kelly? No. All right. How are things over there in the town of Berlin? Pretty good. You keeping it running over there? Yeah. Good. Yep. Tax day was the first quarter taxes was last week, so. Uh, so you do quarter, quarterly there? Yep. So, um, just makes a lot more work for you guys, doesn't it? Doing it each quarter or? Uh, not really. It spaces it out for people. I mean, we have people who pay monthly anyway, but it spaces it out for people. Um, it helps us. We do our school payments quarterly, so. Right. It, it really doesn't make any more work it kind of balances out because we bill utilities quarterly so they're all due the same do you, same bill, time. Do you bill the taxes out quarterly or just one tax bill and they know it's due quarterly so it's one tax bill due quarterly right. but so august we... is busiest because you have the people that come in and pay the whole year yeah so so i know there's in discussions I've had around, people have always asked about different ways to do those type of things. So, you know, that's just, it's good to have someone with some experience that's done it that way, taking a look at it. Yeah, it's it's really not any different. It's one tax bill and they come in and... I was just wondering if we did that, whether it would improve, this is something we can think about, whether it improved the cash flow, right? Does it for you guys probably because each you're getting that money in quarterly and the first year would probably be tough for people because they just pay the tax bill and then the first one will come up in January, but it's only a quarter of it. But, um, you know, something for us to think about just cash flow wise, it might um, be something that would be advantageous for us in the long run. And then it would also be easier, easier, easier on the homeowner. Yeah. Because we have yeah. a way, you know, we now we put our delay and make sure we don't spend it. And then if we have to spend it, we're all like, yeah, in a tizzy. Yeah. We just gave it to the town and be like, okay, we're done with it, you know. We yeah. can't spend it now. I mean, the course, only thing that maybe said to people that they uh, are welcome to pay at any time. So, so if they want to pay uh, on a quarterly oh. basis, they can. It's, it's flexible. Yeah. Yeah, no, they could, but this, this, no one does until the end of the year. But if you right. made it mandatory, you know, we'd start getting money in earlier in the year. We might not have to borrow some. That's but, true. Yeah. And so, it does. I mean, it's not it's not any more work. I mean, yes, we send the escrow file four times a year just in case things update. But that takes, you know, two right. minutes to do. and. You know, people have the, we have people who pay, you know, they'll pay August and November or they'll pay November and February. You get the people who go away for the winter because we run a fiscal year. So it, yeah. it's a little different, but yeah. I think people like having that kind of option. It breaks it down. Yeah, no, I think it's it's not a, not a bad idea. I think it's something that you can discuss it. At a, a town meeting, maybe and get people's thoughts. But all right, Robin, what, anything from you tonight? Uh, well, I was looking at the old minutes, and I noticed uh, we were supposed to be discussing the recommendations for the class four roads and trails yeah. in August, and we didn't. And I didn't even review it yet. But can we put that on the agenda for September? So yep, I notice it, and I'll review it, and then. Yeah, we're not today. Actually, it's, it's, yeah, uh, it's, it's. I think it's well, well, yeah. So, yeah, why don't we try to put that on our first uh, meeting in September then? And uh, great, I see the paving out there today. That's great. I was getting a little doubtful <laughs> that we would see any pavement on the ground, but I was very delighted. No, it to looks, see that. Uh, it looks really good. No. It's going to be nice, I think. Or, uh, but that's about all I had. As as all right, Johnny. Um, yeah, well, one thing, any, any word on our uh, 
uh, on Frank Piazza at all. No, and I, you know, I have not called Frank. But I, uh, Ron, and I know he's he was on vacation, so yeah. you know, I'll check with him this week. Okay, yep. Yeah. All right. Um, um, well, one of the other things we're supposed to spend a little time talking about, and maybe this will be September one as well. I think I'm going to be today is we we're going to just spend a little time talking about the open meeting. Yeah. I think that would be a good one. So if we do the open meeting law and the class four. Oh, that would be good. I was thinking the open meeting law earlier today, too. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah we got to get that down the way here. And I was kind of like, well, it's really important. Like, yeah. yeah. like, it was a knob. Like, well, we get sued if we're doing it wrong and then we deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, Thanks for uh, uh, forgiveness, or People would be a little proactive. <laughs> At least say we've done it. So then yeah, if we get sued. We can talk about it. Okay. Yeah. I agree with that as well. All right. So we got a couple of gen items already. That's good. Okay. So I just wanted to give. Uh, the board and folks an update. So um we will be trans, you know, we, we've been doing a capital campaign. Um and the first launching is re was re is really just to get the funds to do the final construction documents working with DIA and the uh, construction manager that we hired, uh, Alan Breen. Yeah. And I think I mentioned we've uh, well, I have, I, the update is we've probably raised in the vicinity of forty forty five thousand dollars, and we do have, great. It's great. It's really great, and uh, we do have an invoice from VIA, and they're working with us in terms of uh, doing their quarter. You know, like mm -hmm. a certain amount every month instead of some you to spread it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so we have some donations, and we've got our first invoice from VIA. So we're I've, I've reviewed this just so that we have it and it's in the public record for the auditors and stuff. Through the Friends, you know, we have a separate account in the F Friends of the Moortown Library. And Sherilyn got the invoice. So what we're doing is taking money from the Friends as a donation to the town. Okay. And then the town will take it and put it in the town hall funds. And then we will pay the for the for town. That. Yeah. Okay. All right. so, yeah. There's for two reasons. One, it's good to track it that way and everything's right, straightforward. And the other is if the grant gods file on us, smile on us, it's conceivable that some of this is since it's construction costs, project costs, could be could be reimbursed. Be, those those funds could be friends. Yeah. Well, it could be then used for something else like furnishings or right, refrigerators or whatever, right. something that's not in the construction right. costs, yeah. but would be in the renovation or needed for the revitalization. So that's my update on that one. Okay. Uh, How much are you guys putting in just out of curiosity? Did you? Oh, uh, 30. 30 thousand. Okay. Yeah, so that would be two invoices because they're doing 15,000 okay. equipments kind of thing. Uh, Thank you. No, oh, thank everybody. Well, that's what I Yeah, got. it's good. It's a good thing all the way around because we keep the project moving and, you know, we get the grant and we'll be, you know, technically shovel ready. You know, I mean, yeah. there's still be things to do, but we could, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we can start. Mm -hmm. Like, we'd be able to start in 2025 or next thing you know, it'll be 2026, you know, <laughs> time sure flies. Um, so, thinking of time flying, um, and John helped me think and remember about this, is that we have two sidewalk projects basically right now. Mm -hmm. So the village one, where is that specifically in the world of, I mean, because I know things in floodland have changed everything. And then we had the wastewater and that kind of set it back. And we had some folks in town who were, you know, concerned, had some concerns, but. Yes, I do have an update if you don't. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, this one in the village has been pushed out to next year because one landowner has held things up too long. Yeah, well, okay. Well, we knew it was going to be pushed back even right. the way. Yeah. But it's something that could it'll be next year. Next year, 25. So um one thing that we should I'm not sure is it's been coordinated into that, or we should look into whether the crosswalk 
because we were looking at doing a crosswalk between the post office and the store mm -hmm. and even trying to get one in, you know, now while we waited all this time. Right, right now, like two years ago, was, yeah. we even have a drawing of what it would look like. And then through all the process, I was eventually told by someone in the state that you can't do it a temporary excess, you know, uh, ramp. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can't have it as a temporary thing for someone with any kind of disability. Right. So they said, you can't do it. So we... Okay, we'll do it in the sidewalk. But I don't know if it's coordinated per se in that project. I we might have to get another safe roots to school grant or something. I think it is though, Donna. Uh, I believe okay. strongly that it is, but we'll we'll look into it. Okay. Um want me to email Cheryl. Yeah, you can email Cheryl okay. if you want. We're yeah, ahead. Point. And I just uh, on the north Moortown sidewalk, I just uh, emailed the uh, Emily Lewis and Chris Hunt today, just asking for a little update because um, I haven't heard of one. And I wrote them that I said, "Remember, you know, we're supposed to walk on the sidewalk someday." <laughs> and I'm not getting any younger, so you know. I think I think um, I know they were going to do some cost. Right, I think we're going to look at some cost and try to find out because there is a an opportunity this fall to apply for, for a grant. grant. Yeah, so. And so Chris was on the fence of whether we should apply. Oh, that's right. Because of this, of this more money here. But oh, um, thank you for reminding me. I remember that. Um, but then we, I don't want to push the other one out for another year either. Yeah, I know. So uh, oh, thank you for bringing me. Yeah, you know, no, thank it, you for reminding me. I'll look for and I, and as we're talking time. about it. Just, there, yeah. there is things going on, and we canceled the last meeting because of the flood. Because we typically have a monthly meeting on it with um, uh, our consultants. Um, I forget I'm working with so many consultants now. I guess uh, which ones are these that we do? Was that the voice and King? Voice of the yeah, yeah, those. Yeah. Um, Ken Rogan would do voice again. Yeah. We usually have that. That was canceled last. Yeah, well, month, first, but, certainly the flood is um, things are under a little bit. But so. yeah, we need to figure that out. So yeah. I, don't want to, so I don't want to miss an opportunity for eating one. Eating one, right. Okay. Um, but we need to get that one online as soon as possible right. as well. So anything I can help with that at all? I, at I this point, just let's just keep it in there. Right. right. Or, but the email Cheryl and just yeah. The, Ask if there's anything new or not. And I'll look for that email. But it is there. But I remember we were going to circle around on that. And I think we need to talk sooner than later on that so we can make a decision which way we want to go with um, uh, looking for a grant. Um, yeah, because the, the state, state, state has been very cooperative. cooperative. And, and um, um, yeah, yeah, certainly that comes, comes through with some of these projects for us. I'm really, I'm really pleased with, 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 you know, with, you know, with that, with that uh, uh, they've been doing, they've been for, doing it. for it. Mm -hmm. Well, let's uh, hope they continue to do that. What else, Tony? Uh, not, not I'd just like to remind us at some point when we get through the flood and we have a little breather in the fall is to see how we could come up with having this community service here, fair, to reach out to you know, our community and let them know about how they can be involved in committees or the select board or whatever, you know. No, keep pushing that, keep yeah. asking. I know you're, yeah. and it's one of, it's one of those things that keep yeah. kicking down. I don't know how to do it, but it won't pass it, it won't pass it more of a celebration. Right. It's, just, it's, it's, you know, it's hard to get people up, seeing just even having the town hall table to stop yeah. and chit chat, you know, so. Um, and certainly Thursday night, well, I don't think will be the night to do it, but mm -hmm. Thursday evening. That would be my last thing to remind everybody about. Thursday evening, what time is it? Five to seven. Five to seven. Yeah. Five to seven. yeah. So we bring it to the No, you don't, the, you don't have to bring it. There'll be plenty there. Plenty of booze? If you want to bring it no, I don't need it that bad. But I, I'm happy. It looked like a uh, race by Texas Ray, and I'm sorry, the answer from anybody. You know, yeah, me, but because I think we'll need to have a sign telling people to park here because we should have, you know, we should be a decent crowd, so yeah. that'd be good. Yeah. 
And we still do big, so that'll be nice. Hey, well, I mean, well, no lights yet, but no, I like, know. It's going to be kind of early. It's going to be, you know, that's true. Light up, so. um, yeah, great. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Um, first thing I just wanted to do, um, did anyone hear, I, I read on Front Porch Forum the other day, there was someone who was uh, talking about their taxes, and they said they tried locally and, and both state and locally to get some answers. Did, any, did anyone hear, hear anything from, was someone on old 100? Yeah, Molly Backner. Right. Yeah, I haven't heard from, I not So no, did anyone reach out to the office? Uh, well, I'll send a quick email to her and just say, have her give me a call if she wanted. It seems like she just wanted questions on how it's um, calculated. Right. Um, so we can do that, but I don't think anyone, I just want to make sure that we're all giving back to people if uh, they, they reach out. Um, other than that, I, was, I had some nice discussion with Martin on Friday. Uh, you know, things are really pretty tight. As far as um, schedule-wise, trying to get things done um, before winter to make it, the roads uh, that can be for plowable. Um, so we're running into uh, you know a time frame here. So we're we're going to continue to uh, keep our contractors on. Although I think he's going to release one at this point, uh, but we're pretty much trying to keep people on so we can get the roads back. Um, uh, so they can plow them over the winter. Um, other than that, he uh, didn't have a lot to say. So we well, so got this uh, the letter from the folks on uh, on Carrigan Road. I just said, uh, oh yeah, I think it's in the package. See, uh, uh, more time select board and more uh, Martin Cameron uh, from the residence of Carrigan Road. Kathy and Charlie Turnbaugh, uh, Aaron and Chris Nevin, Bill Walker, Ryan and Shauna Burgess, Burgess, Bill Nallen, and Mark and Elizabeth Carnell. Uh, together, we'd like to thank you for all the work you did after the July 10th flood to repair the mountain road. It is a Herculean task to make the road passable again. In addition, we appreciate the culvert, we appreciate the culvert that you put into the entrance of Canada Road to place the damage one. Um, however, they are Concerned about the safety of the road, particularly the observed large trucks and others having difficulty entering more down mountain road safely. Um, though the culvert provided is the same length as the one that was damaged, we believe it has been placed in such a way that the turn in the road is no longer safe. We believe a fire truck or ambulance no longer has safe access to the road. Um, here at the road, maybe we'd like to have the culvert extended. Uh, so why don't we have Ray take a look at this yeah. um, and go through and see if there was anything that can no, do. What's on there. Exactly, yeah. So I should you make sure that that email gets forwarded to Ray? And I will actually discuss it with him as well. Uh, so yeah, did that, did that come in today? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, so I haven't heard about the two years maybe yes. Thank you for bringing that up, huh? Well, no, I mean, it's not that I had it. Yeah, but I remember saying it coming into the video. All right, and, all right, well, that's all I think I have for public comment. I, I do have one other, sorry, one yeah. other we need to find, because I was riding by his home the other day, and he was out walking, which was Dean Moulton, and he's, I waved to him as I was biking by him, as I was, you know, 50 yards away, I heard him go, what about that email? So he sent us an email a while ago about some logging up there. I, ha I haven't gone to find it either, but I just remembered, you know, I had it written down that it was something that we need to respond to. So I don't know if we could, I'll try to find it. Yeah, we or that. something, right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if does bring a bell anybody. Okay. I, 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 I remember that. Yeah. See, it says far to me. We remember if we're on the far to me. Right, John? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, old guys. Yeah, us old guys, right. But yeah, we should dig it out. I guess, John, maybe if you find it, I can find it, we could answer them or something. I don't know. 
Okay. Okay. You, you didn't. Yeah. Help them. We should forward it. I don't think it's new. Yeah. I think there was discussion on it. Michael Brown was logging. He's a forester. Yeah. Well, I asked Mike about it, but um, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he, he said he met with him and it wasn't really clear. Yeah, so let's take a look at it and see what it is. I just didn't want to get it. Back to the yelled out for reminding me. Like, okay, we'll remember. Teacher for going on that loop. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we have old business. Uh, starting at the bottom, we have that uh, class four in the legal trail committee. So we're going to do that at the, sept in the September meeting. So that will be the first September meeting. And up above that, the open meeting law. We'll do that at the same time. Um, nothing new. I'm assuming on ATVs. We need to get the town meeting engagement people back too. Yeah, we're going to meet in the fall. So we'll Why don't we do that in October? Okay. Yeah, Let's put a, a uh, date on that. Yeah. Okay. Um, we've got, I think we, we got yeah. the yeah. joining yeah. matter of the Valley Rep District. I think we can take that off there. Um, and then the other two you can leave, and I don't think there's anything we really need to talk about. Um, well, on the conversation of the town of Brown, just to give you an update, you know, we. We, we applied for the, we got the Merck grant, and the Merck grant was to do this energy audit, and these folks came in and did the energy audit for the town hall and the garage. town of the garage. And then that audit was supposed to then put us in line to be able to apply for these $500,000 grants. But with that very absence, we now got the audit report, the energy audit, or this is where this is it. From any the state about the, what's happened in the Mercury. And I mean, Sherilyn's going to try to do some field, put some feelings out. I emailed this person that we were dealing with from that grant, and it's like radio silence. I haven't heard a word, so that's an update on that. We're doing that project. Perfect. We do need to address that condensation thing. Yeah, as far as gravel pit, I will. Um, I'm going to talk to Martin. Yeah. So I will talk to him about what's. But like you said, it's probably just all the crazy, crazy stuff in the order. Rock, the parking lot, and the roads. No, and I'm sure it's the contractors because I mean, we did talk about oh, those, those guys being in the, the pit when we were getting out of the way. So we'll make sure that they're not doing that. Um, yeah, and you know, they kind of come forward with a four or yeah. So, we, any new business tonight, folks? John or Cali? Seeing here, none there. Okay, we have some things. Let's sign um, things. We have these warrants. I have one um, overload permit. And this is Claire, Claire Lake, Lake. We're now doing business as Lake Forest Products. Um, so I'll sign off on that one. And then we have our uh, regular warrants, uh, payroll warrant, and then one for about 129,000 we can take a look through. So I'll sign the payroll down. If you want to start there, um, but and let's go ahead and approve the minutes for um, August 5th. Is there a Motion to approve. Motion to approve the minutes of our public. Thank you. Second. 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 Thanks, John. All in favor, Brian. Hi. 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 Thank you, everyone. Now, at this point, I. Go ahead, John. So this is all basically um, pretty much blood related. It's one point nine. So the president did declare a federal disaster. A disaster, right? A flood disaster. Not so last Friday, the Friday before. Is that well? Or not? No, here's one right here. We are two. Yeah. yeah. So, so what's the plan? Right? Yeah, yeah, we're in, going up. Um, so that's a good. I thought we knew there was an email out. FEMA has um, actually stopped paying everything right now. Um, they say basically they're out of money, um, and 
Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so the, the direction that we, we have from our early actually, um, this was just, I, you know, I, I don't know, this was just from our local FEMA person. Okay. And at this point, um, they're not paying anything from last year. Or this year. Or this year. Until they get um, it straightened out. And it sounds like it's, um, they just need to get Congress get a more money. They're going to have to have to It's not like, okay. There's a little challenge. There's a little challenge. And meanwhile, we have to pay interest. So uh, Sherilyn has gone back to the Northfield Savings Bank. So if we do need more money, um, that is available. And we've also reached out to the bond barn, the bond bank as well. And that's who holds the bond for the, the large. Yeah. Oh. And you know what? Right. Stop, did you have that email? Mm. I'll go ahead and I'll forward to everyone. I thought it was on everyone's email. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's the email. Yeah, it came in last Thursday or Friday. Well, I'm already signed up. All right, so um, if there's another any other business done, I wanted to go into executive session. So I'm going to move that we go in with executive session. And well, let me guess, this is um, for an employee, um, the appointment of an employee evaluation of public office employees. Right, exactly. All right. So that's the motion. Is there a second? And all in favor vote aye. 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 And this will include uh, just the board tonight.